my friends, welcome back to the channel. So if you are seeing me sitting by my desk, this means uh, this is another story time. And uh, I noticed that you really loved my story about Isdal and Woman case. And a lot of you were discussing some spiral related uh, stuff uh, in the comment section, which excited me a lot. And I was very happy to involve in these discussions. But today I thought I'm going to bring out another spy story. It will not be as criminal maybe as this Dal woman. Uh, there will not be so many secrets, but still I think it's an interesting life story about uh, an actress, beautiful woman, simply talented uh, lady. So she was basically a spy for Sweden. However, she was Norwegian. And all of this is a little bit related also to Norway and it happened during the Second World War. And the saddest thing about this woman, maybe some of you Norwegians who are watching already are starting to understand where is this going. So after the Second World War ended and her spy games also finished, uh, she received a lot of resentment from uh, Norwegians, from Swedish people, although because of her a lot of spy things happened and a lot of also positive things happened uh, in regards to the uh, resistance movement uh, against uh, Nazi Germany. So I think it's enough for an introduction, let's start. So, the actress I will be talking to you about today is Sonja Wigert and uh, her life is actually like a soap opera, like a movie and there is actually a movie made according to her life story. Uh, I watched it with subtitles, it was in Norwegian, but pretty much it gives you a, a lot of impression about how things happened during her life. So I will put the link below as a suggestion, maybe you are interested in seeing it after watching this video. So Sonja Wigert, who was she? Maybe the name of Sonja Wigert, most probably the name of Sonja Wigert is not familiar for you. Uh, I think it's more common to know her uh, in Norway and Sweden. Uh, I wasn't aware about this actress either because I'm from Latvia and uh, she wasn't also like a Hollywood star, so no surprise at that. But she was a pretty huge thing here in Scandinavian Nordic countries. Just a side note, there weren't so many materials I could uh, refer to during my research. Uh, so pretty much it was uh, mainly in Swedish and Norwegian. I was trying to translate and uh, trying to figure out things on my own and also watch the movie. So I hope you will appreciate in advance my struggle with your likes and check out if you have subscribed to the channel. And I hope you are cozy. I hope you have your cup of coffee with you because we are starting. Sonja Wigert was born in 1913, in November 13th, and uh, she was born in a place called Notoden in Norway. So she was a daughter of Major Sigvald Hansen and Carmen Francisca Christina Kirsebom. Sonja had two brothers, Knut and Erik. Already since childhood Sonja was very artistic uh, girl, she liked dancing, she liked acting and at one point she even wanted to become a fashion designer and enrolled the Norwegian School of Crafts and Design in Oslo. Later on she had a chance to travel. She traveled to learn profession and also to improve her language and also to improve her dancing skills. Allegedly she was a nanny to some kind of French family while she was living in Paris this helped her to develop her French language knowledge. Also during her travels uh, she was staying in Switzerland and therefore she also knew German and she was very fluent in English. When she returned back to Norway she wanted to enroll business school but everything went completely different way. As I mentioned she was a very artistic and beautiful young girl and this played an important role in her life. In 1934 she took her first huge step towards being uh, recognized. Norwegians uh, decided to organize a competition pageant uh, that was called Find Norway's Garbo. So I don't think that I have to introduce you who is Greta Garbo. So she was this 
Swedish American superstar in Hollywood. And I guess Norwegians wanted to find their own Greta Garbo, so they made this competition and Sonia actually finished in the first place. She was sharing this place with another young girl and as a result she was noticed, uh, she got her first parts, her small parts in movies and she started acting and playing in theatres and she ended up even on the stage of National Theatre and everybody simply adored her. But uh, while she was still on top of her career in Norway, she also managed to get married and she moved to Sweden and she started acting there and soon after she became a star also in Sweden. Her husband was a Swedish writer Torsten Birger Alexis Flodden. Through her marriage she became a Swedish citizen and in Sweden she starred in 22 films and several theatre productions. Then in 1940s uh, she was invited to participate in a huge project for a movie in Norway and so she travelled to Oslo. By that time uh, the Second World War was uh, approaching uh, the Nordic countries and uh, this fact influenced her life a lot. In 1941 she was approached by Swedish uh, resistance uh, activists and uh, they were basically offering her to help them and become uh, a spy. So why they were approaching Sonia? First of all, we all know from the movies and from what we have most probably seen and read, Nazis are like suckers for beautiful things, including beautiful women. I think the Swedish resistance uh, activists believe that Sonia could be the perfect fit. Remember, she also knew the language. Year 1942. Oslo was a grey and gloomy city, but outside the Hotel Continental, one day in August, there were two unusually elegantly dressed ladies. A large Mercedes picks them up and takes to Crown Prince couple's residence in Oscar. Sonja Wigert is on her way to meet Josef Terboven, the man who a couple of months later will initiate the extermination of the Norwegian Jews. There is this luscious party with exquisite food and drinks, which in that time was in sharp contrast to living conditions elsewhere in the country. And now let's dive into a little background so you don't get too confused into this story. So the story basically winds around this German Nazi leader uh, who came to Norway and his name was Josef Terboven and he was basically the target that Sonia had to work with. So here comes the first controversy. So basically she had to kind of sell and offer herself to this uh, Nazi German guy in order to get out uh, an important information from him. And this is why maybe she was despised. But I think that her motivation wasn't so much uh, the information and helping the country as helping her father. You see, during that time, uh, Nazis took uh, Sonia's father and they took him to uh, prison. So he was there in a, uh, in a custody and she really wanted to help somehow to get him out from there. And uh, I think that was the motivation why she actually agreed to become a spy. Because I guess the Swedish resistance uh, said that if you do the job for us as a spy, we will help you to get to get out your father from the prison. Maybe she also believed that she can somehow charm uh, Terboven, the Nazi guy she had to work with, uh, and make him to release her father from the prison. So I think that was the biggest motivation for her to actually agree and go and spy. Sonia knows her work. She actually starts to flirt with Terboven and uh, I read some sources that uh, Terboven was actually a sucker when it came to women charm and uh, so I think it wasn't very difficult for such a beautiful lady as Sonia to charm this Nazi guy. After the party ended, uh, they were pretty much hanging around a lot, uh, going to dinners, parties, and people spotted her in the company of Germans. 
and this was definitely despised and it pretty much looked like uh, Sonia is doing her work very well she got into very close relationship with uh, Terboven he cannot actually say and know how far was she going with this relationship I mean if they had like sexual encounters but I think that uh, nothing happened without these close relationships and she had to kind of sell her body to this uh, Nazi German guy. Uh, some sources actually say that during this game with uh, Terbo and she actually kind of also fell for him. Uh, I will quote, she said that I think he's an extraordinarily funny and fascinating person. I don't know how to comment this, uh, I believe that maybe she was just spending so much time with him and uh, seeing him outside his Nazi actions that maybe she kind of fell in love with his personality. I don't know if it's actually possible to love this kind of devil, but whatever. So maybe she was in love, I don't know. And by using her lady charms, she actually persuaded uh, Terboven to release her father from the prison and I think everything was as planned, so the Swedish resistance got the information from her, she had her father released and we could put the full stop here, but yeah, things went further and she continued to spy, so nothing stopped there. And she actually became like an official spy for Swedish government and in official documents she was uh, put as a spy under the cover name Bill and yeah so if somebody was talking about the spy named Bill nobody knew who this Bill was then this Bill was actually a lady and that was Sonja Wigert. So the story continues a little bit further with this spy game and it gets more and more confusing because Terboen actually was kind of into Sonja and he felt like they were close and she was very supportive and he actually offered her to become a spy for him. So he offered Sonia to become a German spy in Sweden because she was kind of of Nordic uh, descent and she had connections. She was pretty recognized. And so he said, so if you hear something or if you can get some information from somewhere, you can maybe work on me. At that point, she had one leg for Swedish government, one leg for Germans, but I guess at the basis she was for Swedish and just pretending to be a German spy, if you're following my thought. <laughs> Sonia had to balance on a knife edge because the Germans did not hide that. It will affect the family in Norway if it turns out that she plays twice, meaning she is a double agent. But Sonia's life-threatening game continued. She was also contacted by the American OSS, later CIA, who could tell that she was monitored by both the British Secret Service and the Norwegian Resistance Movement when she was in Oslo. She provides information to Americans, but contact was limited to a minimum for Sonja's safety. Thanks to Sonja, Baron von Gosler, the head of German tourist office in Stockholm, was revealed as a spy and deported. It turns out that the entire tourist office has only been a cover for Germans' extensive espionage in the Swedish capital. So, as you can see, she did a lot of work, uh, not to mention with the information that she provided, but I think the most important part is about her soul and mind, that Oh my god, it, it should be so difficult for a person to do all of this. And yeah, the war ended. Uh, they had results because of her, but nobody actually said like official thank you and nobody actually appreciated her work. And they didn't recognize her as being a spy that did a lot of work for the country. She was regarded kind of as a woman who had encounters with Germans and she was heavily uh, resented. And I think uh, as from the sources that I read, 
the government, the Swedish government, uh, actually didn't recognize that she was a spy. So she couldn't say that I was doing that because I was a spy. They said, uh, no, she wasn't working for us just because it was a spy game and they couldn't reveal all of the facts. For them not recognizing this fact, Sonia couldn't actually defend herself and say that yes, I was with Germans, but I was only because I was helping, I was a spy. I think it's so, so unfair uh, in regards to her. Um, it's simply devastating. So if we look at the situation like that, we can understand why people actually were thinking that she's like some kind of German slut or whatever. So it must be very, very hard for Sonia at that time. So now I explained all the little bits of the spy game she was going through and uh, now I think I will get into the second part of this story, which for me as a woman is more like closer and speaks to me. Let's talk about her love life and it's heartbreaking to read what she was going through. Remember the party that I was mentioning where she was kind of supposed to flirt with Terboen and uh, kind of make sure that he falls in love with her, that party was actually quite crucial uh, in her future life. There she met a ship owner and he was actually a Norwegian shipping magnate, very rich person, and his name was Anders Jare, and he was buying glamorous things for Sonia, even a house, because he really kind of fell for her, and he really, really wanted Sonia to become his wife, However, Sonia didn't respond with the same feelings because on that party she met another person. The person, I guess, that she loved uh, for all of her life. And he was Hungarian journalist and diplomat. His name was Andor Geller. relationship was too complicated because he was from Hungary, a diplomat from Hungary, and at that time uh, Hungary was on the German side, so this meant that their relationship or maybe in future uh, marrying uh, could not be possible because, you know, Sonia was on that side against Germans and he was like a diplomat for a country who was on the German side. But at this point I was so surprised to discover, and I think it now will sound like a soap opera, <laughs> because this Hungarian diplomat, I'll remind you his name was Andor, wasn't actually on the German side. Secretly he was helping uh, Hungarian Jews uh, to escape uh, Germans, and he was also kind of cooperating with allies and trying to make Hungary a part of allies in the fight against German Nazis. So he wasn't as bad as it looked from the side and how he was pretending. So in truth, their relationship was possible, but they just didn't know a lot of things about each other. And while Andor was on his mission of saving Hungarian Jews, he kind of disappeared from Sonia's life for a while. And during that time, she met a noble Danish aviator and uh, his name was Niels von Holsten Ratlu. They got married in a small peaceful wedding and uh, everything was kind of fine. However, uh, Sonia became a widow very quickly because he had some kind of uh, plane accident and he died. And so uh, Sonia again returned to her love of her life under the Hungarian diplomat and uh, then he kind of found out about Sonia's spy games, that she was kind of also engaging with Germans, and remember he was completely against Germans, he was saving Jews, and he couldn't understand how she could engage in such a close relationships with this Nazi guy, and so he just couldn't bear this fact, and he went away and left her which is sad, because I think both of them still loved each other. 
Sonia's life afterwards gets even harder because she wasn't able to start again her acting career because of the resentment from the people. She also uh, got some money problems and she was close to losing her house. But her heart still was hurting because she loved Under. And she actually started to look after him whenever, wherever in the world he was. And in 1961, she found him in New York. Uh, she went to find him face to face, to speak to him. And I guess in her mind, she had some kind of feeling that they would start again their love story. However, uh, she received a very cold response. And uh, I guess he just couldn't digest all of this. And he kind of said her to go away. So, heartbroken, she came back uh, home and uh, then she attempted to kill herself. However, she was saved by her sister-in-law, Eva, and so she survived. After this devastating experience, uh, she went to Spain and she actually stayed to live there. She settles in a small house in Alfas del Pi. There she lives quite a lonely life. Her brother Eric recalls uh, visiting her uh, and he recalled that there were days when she was this, again, charming, beautiful lady like Sonia Wigert uh, that everybody knew before war and there were days when she was quite depressed, devastated and was drinking a lot and sometimes she even did drunk driving and once she had an accident on a small bridge but she uh, kind of took off safe, no injuries but afterwards, up until nowadays, this small bridge is called Sonia Wigert Bridge. Sonia Wigert died in 1980, she was age 66 and then there there's this thing I don't quite actually understand. So the next day after her death, her brother Knut and Eric came to her house. Uh, so they took all the evidence, like letters, papers or whatever there was about uh, Sonia's past. And they actually put all of this in a fireplace. So I don't know why they were doing this. Maybe they just wanted people not to know all about Sonia's past. Maybe there were some more secrets, I don't know, but simply there is no evidence anymore. But there is one mystery and you know I like good mysteries. So one of the brothers of Sonia, his name was Eric, revealed that a weird thing happened after Sonia's funeral. It happened like a couple of months of this funeral. So he came home and on the steps of his house, uh, he found a mysterious plastic bag from Swedish Shell. And it actually contained some scrapbooks from Sonia and they were from that spy time. So the question is, who was this mysterious person who left this bag on the doorstep of Sonia's brother? How did he get all of these papers? What was the purpose of that? So here we can speculate. So it could be Ander, maybe he wanted to give away the last stuff that he had left from Sonia. Maybe there was some other person involved who wanted to give some kind of message with this. I don't know. What is your thoughts? Who was this person who did it? Write down in comments. Let's discuss it. But the saddest thing in my opinion in this story is that Sonia Wigert, the person who gave her soul and body to this spy game didn't receive any restoration or recognition after, after her significant efforts during the Second World War. We can, of course, as I said, discuss a lot of things that she had to do and she was doing, but the results of the spy game, they were there. So they got the information, they even arrested people and it helped a lot. So I think it would be wise to at least recognize her work publicly and put, a, put away all of this heaviness that she was receiving from the people 
around her after war because I think she deserved at least a thank you from people around her. Instead, she got a lot of resentment. So that's my opinion. What do you think? Write down in comments. And again, write down in comments what do you think about this devastating story, love story that happened with her and her Hungarian diplomat boyfriend. I think Andor should have accepted her back. So yeah, this is the story of Sonja Wigert. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will watch the movie because it's quite interesting. It uh, reveals a lot of things about her and about the spy game itself. Yeah, that being said, write down in comments uh, what stories would you like to hear next. I know that some of you already suggested the Cambo Man, who is another legendary mysterious man that was found on the soil of Norway. Uh, and had the similar kind of clues that were on Isda woman, so it could be interesting. Yeah, maybe you have some other suggestions I would be very happy to look into. As you understand, talking about people's lives or mysteries takes a little bit more time, so I will not make these videos as often, but I'm still going to keep up because obviously I like to do these researches. Okay, guys. I hope you have a lovely day, stay safe, stay happy, uh, put those likes, subscribe to the channel and see you next time!